everybody. This is Jenna. And I'm Noelle. And you're listening to More Than Murder, where we delve into everything eerie with a side of true crime. More Than Murder is not your typical true crime podcast. Join us on a weekly tour through the haunted, the bloody, the creepy, and the nutty on our Freaky Fridays. Hi, you listeners. Hiya. Welcome back to your favorite day of the week. It's and gotta be. ours, of yep. course. Mm-hmm. And happy Freaky Friday, Noel. Happy Freaky Friday. Freaky Thursday, but to you guys, Freaky Friday. Freaky Friday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's been a few weeks. We've done. We've given you lots of haunted. Mm-hmm. So of course we're due for another serial killer. Yeah, and y'all better buckle up. Oh my God, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say that like 14 billion times. Don't be long. Yes, and I, before anything else, I want to put out a disclaimer. This episode will contain the graphic and explicit content. Listener discretion is advised. Mm -hmm. So, yes, like she said, buckle up. It's going to be a long one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's jump right in. Might as well. Yeah, we just got to get through this, guys. Yeah, we're going to we try do. to stay on topic. Yeah, so. And get it done. This, <laughs> this could be the longest yet. Let's so. see how it goes. <clears throat> We're staying on topic, of course. Here we go. <laughs> Today we are talking about the crimes of the killer clown, John Wayne Gacy. Oh boy, oh boy. Yep. This dude is probably the reason I hated clowns as a kid. I knew clowns. Luckily I didn't know about him. No good. Kid. No good. I don't even think I really knew about him. I just knew, I think I had this just sense of just like, nope, clowns is bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. So they were not, no, no. So, the man of the hour, John Wayne Gacy, was born in Chicago, Illinois, on March 17th, 1942. Okay. Like others, he had a very abusive, alcoholic father who consistently belittled the kid. Not shocking. He was told often that he was dumb, and his father called him names such as, in quotes, sissy and mama's boy. Which, don't call your kids that. That's Bro, don't do that. It's not cool. So, of course, this hurt the young boy you know he wanted his father's love and to have a relationship with him and it was just being nurturing all the time Mm -hmm. yeah as a parent like Mm -hmm. so instead of of course getting the love from his father he was physically and mentally abused constantly so he just felt like less than a person the smallest in the world probably Mm -hmm. from a noticeably young age gacy exhibited some questionable behavior very questionable. Okay. At the age of seven in 1949, and they just gave me a date, so I did the math there. Okay. Gacy and a friend were caught sexually assaulting a young girl. Yeah. The age of seven. eight? Seven. Seven? Seven. Oh, my God. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. So, he was caught by his father, so obviously he was whipped. He was punished very harshly which for this. I mean, which I mean, uh, we're that don't be a, doing that. That's that questionable. That's a pretty punishable offense, but... Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. So, I guess on another occasion, Gacy was taken advantage of by an older male family mate. Family mate? <laughs> family male friend. <laughs> I had male there, and it looked like mate. But yeah, no, he apparently, you know, this, this happened to him. Kind of often in his young days wow. his childhood is one of those ones that's like ticking all them boxes to yeah. this kid's gonna be a serial killer yeah. or something of the sort definitely led astray uh-huh so of course due to the strained relationship between him and his father he of course never divulged this abuse that he received he's i'm not gonna tell him he's gonna think even worse things about me mm-hmm. unfortunately which <sighs> You know, I'm not a parent, but you can't, you have to be the safe space for your kids. They can't think, like, I can't tell them, I can't tell them. No, it's it's awful. You have to Just be the person. To be able to talk to you about Yes, things. and be comfortable, and this, he didn't have that. So mm-hmm. he felt like he was going to get in trouble if he said anything. It's just oh, awful. After this high school. all the time, I'm sure. Oh, all the time. All the time. So after high school, at the age of 18, obviously, Mm -hmm. Gacy got involved in politics. Okay. He was working for the Democratic Party candidate for his area. So it was like local politics, but he he was very, I mean, even later in life, I don't really get into it, but later in life, he's always kind of dabbling in politics. Mm -hmm. His father, of course, was not a fan of this, 
I, I don't know if he was just like maybe a Republican and he just didn't like the liberal leanings of his son or something, but he wasn't a fan of this. And he decided that he was going to keep as much control over Gacy as he could. Of course. He bought Gacy a car, but he would control the keys. Okay. You get them when I tell you you can get them. Even though it's his car, which... But it was I bought mean, by his father. So yeah. his father apparently bought the car and was like, all right, but these are the rules. Which, and he's an adult now, right? He's 18. He's 18, So yeah. it's not like he's, like, a child, like, 16, so No, or exactly, exactly. So it's it's very manipulative and controlling. Yeah. Yeah. He was not, he wasn't happy with this. So I guess somehow Gacy obtained a second secret pair of keys for this car. Huh. Yep, so he would, like, you know, sneak out and... Do what he needed to do. Yeah. This time, he was like, nope, I'm leaving. So he took off to Las Vegas to basically get away from his father. He's like, I can't can't do this anymore. I'm, I'm gone. While in Las Vegas, he obtained a job at a mortuary funeral home. Yeah, yeah. And apparently, he, like, slept in there, too. He, like, worked there, and he needed a place to sleep. So the guy was like, oh, yeah, I guess, you know, you can sleep here and help out and make a paycheck. Yeah. Yeah. He. Okay. Yeah. It's probably not a good place for this guy. Yeah. 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 So apparently, he was training by watching the embalming practices, and he probably, like, assisted with certain things and, you know, helped out. This is ookie. So apparently one night... Ookie? It's not good. It's gross. <laughs> so apparently one night while in Vegas, he was alone in the mortuary. Gacy ended up caressing the body of a deceased male. Holy red fucking flag. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I guess it said that, like, it kind of shocked him. But I took it as, like, I think that shock came from, like, he probably enjoyed... That it shocked him that he enjoyed. Yeah, it. right. Yeah, right. Yeah, because he was oh taken aback, you know. Yeah, I, I, mm. didn't think of like that, but exactly. Hey. And then you have to process that, you know. So yeah, that he freaked out. He ended up calling his parents, and he's like, "Can I come home? I don't mm-hmm. want to be here anymore." Mm-hmm. So he returns to Chicago, and he enrolls in Northwestern Business College. He graduates in 1963, or after graduating in 1963. He took a management trainee position at a local shoe company. So he's like, I'm going to be a businessman. <laughs> he, he was soon transferred to the local, uh, or to the location in Springfield, Illinois. Okay. So it's not Chicago. It's a little bit further. He probably has some freedom away from his family. And he ends up working his way from salesman to management fairly quickly. Okay. In Springfield, he also met Marilyn Myers. He, she was a co-worker of his, and I, all my resources just said quickly engaged, quickly engaged. So I don't know. I don't think they courted very long. It was just like a, hi, nice to meet you. You want to marry me type mm-hmm. of thing. So, yeah, they got engaged very quickly. It's at this time as well that Gacy joined the local JCs. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't deep, there's really not much either. Like if you go to the Wikipedia page, which will be sourced, there's not a ton of information. I take it as kind of like a Mason's type of group where you get hmm. the guys together and you have like, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So once again, I didn't go into the deep goog, but I do have from the JC Wikipedia page, they're like code. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, so this is the JC Code. Quote, we believe that faith in God gives meaning and purpose to human life. That the brotherhood of man transcends the sovereignty of nations. That economic justice can can best be won by free men through free enterprise. That government should be of laws rather than of men. That Earth's greatest treasure lies in human personality. And that service to humanity is the best work of life. Okay. Yeah. So that was their, like, philosophy. That's what they lived by. I mean, if they're going to actually follow. They don't. I mean, I can't. Okay. All right. Honk the horn. 
I can't say that every JC group is bad. Yeah. But we are going to get into what he was up to with the JCs, and it ain't cool. So let me just say that. I'll preface that, okay? Not saying everybody, but they were getting up to some shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah. It's within the JCs that Gacy, <laughs> the JCs that Gacy. <laughs> Uh, he, Jacy Gacy. I'm a rap star. It's like Josie Grossy. <laughs> yeah, it is. Aw. Anyway, so yeah, it's within the JCs that Gacy has his second homosexual experience. Second, because he was touched by the male member. That's right. I was wondering abused, if he was like counting abused his... earlier. Well, no, like before that, it was the girl. That's right. That's right. And I, he always had this. I think he had you know, homosexual feelings that probably weren't processed. Mm -hmm. But then he's also being abused by men older than him and might think, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. I guess Gacy had been invited to the home of a fellow member. They were going to have some drinks, a bit of a chat. You know, the boys. But, hmm, due to him being highly intoxicated, he ended up sleeping at this guy's house. He was like, you can crash on my couch, it's fine. Okay. With Gacy being drunk, the other member, of course, took advantage of him, and he started to perform fellatio on Gacy okay. as he slept. Yeah. And I do think, you know, this this either inflated those urges that he did have, but he also isn't out. He's never out. You know, we'll get into how his family dynamic worked, but he's never fully, like... I am a homosexual man. Okay. Uh, yeah. And he never would because of his father, too. You know, no. That's that was the most important. He couldn't yeah. He couldn't do that. So, he and Marilyn ended up marrying in September of 1964. So, that's, like, less than a year. Like, yeah. Yeah. Hey. Do you, I guess. Shortly after, the couple ended up relocating to Waterloo, Iowa. Okay. Marilyn's father had acquired, like, KFC franchise restaurants. Huh, interesting. Yep, so he needed help managing the stores. Okay. Of course, Gacy, he had a background in management. He started managing the area, the locations. Once they got settled in their new home, Gacy opened a, quote, club in his basement. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, so this apparently was the place where he would invite his employees to blow off steam, have drinks, play pool. Mm -hmm. Of course, he was only inviting the male, the young male employees. Of course. Of course. Why not? Yes. And it's probably like a, mm, it's for the boys, you know? Mm. Anyway, <laughs> I wrote this. While in the club, <laughs> Gacy would supply alcohol. <laughs> Sorry, this isn't funny. Hold on. Good Lord. He's in Duck Club. She got some dad jokes up in here. <laughs> Always. <laughs> anyway, not funny. Gacy would supply alcohol to these young men, and then he would make sexual advances towards them. Wow, that's disgusting. Yeah. And he apparently, if if they didn't seem keen on these advances the way that Gacy wanted them to, he would just laugh it off and be like, I'm testing your morals. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He's like, I'm testing you. God. It's like, seriously, what the fuck? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's, fuck you, dude. Well, it's also Don't about... me like that. Men are using their power. This this guy's using his power. He is a manager. He's your manager. He's inviting his employees, and he's an older man. Yeah. Making advances and being like, Mer, like, stop. Stop being gross. Yeah, stop exactly. luring young people to you. Yeah. And then taking advantage of them, especially because they always, you always hear, supplied them with liquor and, and drugs and did it. It's like, come on. They just got them you all know. disgusting. Like, they can't consent. They know that. Exactly. Yeah. And they know that these teens, when you're a teen, it's like, who can get his beer? Yeah. You know, he can get you beer. He can get you drugs. He also used to promise, like, I'll show you snuff films. Because he knew that teenage boys are like, hmm, horny. Mm -hmm. So it's just. It's awful. He just basically used his fucking power. Fuck you, men. Not all men. Anyway, I literally had anyway written here, and I did it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, in 1966, Gacy and his wife welcomed a son, 
And this was actually a turning point in the relationship between him and his own father. Oh. Yep, yep. He was like, you're a man now, son. You have a son. Something. I don't know. That's what I picture. (laughs) Yeah. Good God. Uh Uh-huh. According to the Wikipedia page on Gacy, his father apologized for the abusive treatment and told Gacy that he had been wrong about him all these years. Oh, wow. Uh Uh-huh. Because, you know, he's got a good job and he's stable and he's got a wife and he's got a newborn son. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why does that... How does that prove to you? I know. Like, what? fuck you, I man. I can't stand that that type of stuff equi- like equates to being, having a good, a good life yeah. and a good thing going for you. Like Exactly. Exactly. Like, fuck you, man. Fuck you. Anyway. So, he's getting comfortable with his life in Waterloo, and in Waterloo, he also joins that chapter of the JCs. Okay. So they're all over the place. They are. And you'll see some famous people who are JCs if you go to the Wikipedia that will be in the sources. Interesting. Yep, yeah, so there's JCs everywhere, and apparently in the Waterloo chapter, he was highly regarded by other members. He like moved up the chain pretty quick and just yeah, that kind of, I didn't I'm not here for the JCs. I'm not like mm-hmm. looking at what they're the president and blah, 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 and all that. No, he was high up in there. Members liked him. That's all we need to know. So let's get into some of the practices that these JCs were kind of getting into. Okay? Okay? And I don't know. These are the views, once I said, that Gacy's chapter was doing. Okay? And that's according to the Wikipedia page. I'm not saying all the JCs are bad. Okay? Disclaimer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I even wrote here, don't come for me, JCs. <laughs> I don't need that. Don't. Are they, I don't even need if, that. Are you even still around? Email us and let us know. <laughs> See, I don't know because there's like, well, I guess, I don't know if those members are like from when they were like in the 70s or like now. I, I don't know. Does the Masons even exist? I think so. I think they're probably somewhere. I know my grandpa was a Mason, Ugh, but like. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Write us in. Are you a Mason? Yeah. Does it exist? Why are you a Mason? Are you a JC? I'm sorry if you are. I just know Gacy was doing this when he was a JC. So don't come for me. Uh, yeah. So apparently Gacy and other members were involved in obtaining sex workers, drug use, and wife swapping. Okay. Yep. Which it seems like that's. That's what old men groups used to do. Like that, Back in the day, you had men's groups where they would go together and they would, like, do things. And a lot of it wasn't great stuff that they were doing. But, like, I don't feel like that exists much anymore. Like, when the guy would come home and be like, is dinner ready? I gotta go meet the guys at the club. Like, oh, that yeah. was just, you know. you're a rich person, probably, but. But even just, like, around here in, like, little towns and stuff, there's still some sort of. It's like with the Masons. It's just like this guy group. Mm-hmm. It was just bigger back then. I just don't get it. I don't know. And they spew God, but then they're doing stuff like this. That's very godly of you. Like, what are they doing? Anyway, uh, now we're probably far into this, but we're getting into Gacy's first run-in with the law. Okay. In August 1967, Gacy met 15-year-old Donald, Vor- Donald Voorhees. He was the son of a fellow J.C. member. So after, of course, supplying the boy with alcohol, Gacy sexually assaulted him. Of course. Of course. In the following months after Voorhees, Gacy was abusing several other young males, too. It was just kind Jeez of it's just what he was doing at that uh-huh. time. By 1968, like a year later, Voorhees had reported the assault to his father, who called the police. Gacy, of course, denied all the accusations. Of course. But they did end up arresting him, and he was indicted on sodomy charges. The court had Gacy go through a psych eval, of course, you know, to make sure he's competent. And apparently the doctors conducted, or concluded, that he had an antisocial personality disorder... And according to, like, the Wikipedia, the clinical term is, like, sociopathy or psychopathy. Psychopathy. Sorry. (laughs) Can't read those words and say them out loud. I know. (laughs) It's like a... 
Uh, yeah. So they found things, but they cleared him for trial and said he was competent. So I don't get that. I just don't understand how you can... He's got this, 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 and this, but no, he's good to go. Yeah, I don't get that either. And he'll that never get rid no of sense. these things. I Yeah, I don't get it. So, anyway, the same year, 1968, he was convicted on the charge of sodomy, and he was sentenced to 10 years. <sighs> Shortly after the sentencing, Gacy's wife, Marilyn, filed for divorce, and it was granted and finalized in 1969. I mean, yeah. You don't go down for sodomy of, of a 15-year-old boy and be like, yeah, I'll stay married. Do you listen? Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. Bye. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, no. While incarcerated, apparently Gacy was regarded as a model prisoner, of course. And <clears throat> maybe this had something to do with the next part. In 1970, Gacy was granted parole after serving just 18 months of his 10-year sentence. Wow. Isn't that bananas? Bananas. Wow. 18 months of 10 years. I don't care how good you are. I don't care if you're... I'm not going to say that. I was going to say something real bad. I was going to say something real bad. I'm not going to say it. You guys can email it if you want to know what I was going to say. Yeah, no. So he gets out fairly early. Once he's out, he moves to Chicago, and he's back. He's just back doing what the fuck he does. He's just right back at it. In 1971, he's arrested again for the sexual assault of another teen boy. Apparently, these charges end up being dropped because the teen boy does not, he won't testify, which that happens. That Mm -hmm. happens all the time. Mm -hmm. But that's got to be hard. Mm -hmm. Fucking hard to do. Apparently, parole in Iowa, apparently, 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 (laughs) <laughs> Apparently, parole in Iowa never found out about these charges. Mm-hmm. What? How? Mm-hmm. Of so course they, not. So they weren't, because they were dropped and he was in Chicago. Wow. In Chicago and Iowa ain't talking, apparently. He probably wasn't even supposed to be in Chicago. I think he, when you're on parole somewhere, you have to stay there. In there, yeah. In that vicinity, yeah. So, yeah, I don't even think that was probably a violation. And then, you know, doing that to another teen boy, violation. But, nope, they never find out. (sighs) And without a violation, he's let off in October of 1971. So, I think after that, he is on, like, a probation. It's a little more easy to F off than parole, I feel. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew a lot of kids growing up, they were like, I'm on probation, but they were still being little assholes. So, to restart his life, he obtained a ranch-style home with the help of his mother. This was located at 8213 West Summerdale Avenue in Chicago. Okay. I am saying that very slowly because this address and this home will become infamous. And it's not for good things. Of course it is not. Never. So, once he was settled, the neighborhood gave him a warm welcome. And he actually became regularly active within his community. People loved this man. He was a nice man. He was going out of his way for people. And apparently every year he held a summer picnic for, like, everybody. There's, like, 400 people here. He's holding it for, like, the whole town, the whole, like, cul-de-sac area. And he's just, yeah, he's going off. And I think there's pictures from, like, 4th of July picnic or something. And he's, like, dressed up. There might be. If not, find it online. (laughs) Sorry about it. Um, Yeah. So that same year, Gacy also met his second wife, Carol. Okay. So Carol and her daughters, her daughters were from a previous marriage, end up moving in with Gacy, and then the couple marry, like, right off the bat. Because that's what what Gacy does. He just, you know, bing, bang, boom, married. Okay. Now, this marriage is not solid. We do have the windows open disclaimer if you heard that. It's. It's too nice out. It's too nice out. Yeah, I need the window open. (laughs) Okay. So, yeah, like I said, this marriage was not solid. It's not going to last long. It's just not good. And we'll get into it. After moving back to Chicago, after, you know, his prison stint, Gacy had taken a job as a cook first. It's Mm, hard to get a job. Comforting. Well, it's hard to get a job, too, for felons. That's another story. And... Not gate. I mean, it's hard. It's fucking hard. All that shit is hard. So it's like some people, you know, you get a felony for something that isn't like 
violent and then they can never get a job. It's very hard for them to get a job. Mm-hmm. But then you think about the violent people and you're like, well, you shouldn't have to do <laughs> Like, it's I so know. hard. Oh, yeah. So, it really depends on what you did. Uh-huh. It really does. Exactly. But he took a job as a cook, but he wanted more, so he decided to start a part-time construction business, which he called PDM Contractors. And the P, the D, and the M do stand for something. It's like painting, decorating, M. Maintenance. <laughs> M. Painting, decorating, M. <laughs> <laughs> Which, don't quote me, I might not even be right on that because I didn't write that down. There's, like, so much on this guy that I was like, no. <laughs> no I'm not writing that down. It's PDM. It's something. So, once he started working uh, the construction full-time, this job kept him fairly busy. They said he was working up to 16 hours a day. Yeah. That's okay. according to Wikipedia. So, he was he was busy. So while seeing a little pop up up, while things seem to be going gravy for Gacy, <laughs> Jesus, I got them all this episode. Yeah, yeah. you do. <laughs> His marriage was actually crumbling, so this isn't funny. <laughs> I mean, oh fuck! <laughs> it's good for her. Yeah, I'll she gets out of there. But um, yeah. So anyway, it was it was rocky from the start, but I guess Gacy had anger, really bad anger in him which Carol did not like, and she also stated that many young males had been entering the garage with Gacy. Okay. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. So we'll get into, like, the divorce, but then we're going to go back in time a little bit because he's he's doing things. (laughs) He's doing things, guys. Lord. Um, Anyway, so a big outburst in 1975 was the one that just, Set her over. She's like, I'm done with this guy. I can't put up with this anymore. And she filed for a divorce. Yep. His second divorce was finalized in 1976. And apparently, the girls, like, left the house, like, when the divorce was finalized. So, I think they were still living there during, like, the separation period, maybe. Okay. And then I think she... Yeah. Yeah. And then I think, like, once it was finalized, she's like, all right. I think it was, like, 76 that she finally, like, moved out of that house. Yeah. So, yes. Uh, now, the most notable fact about Mr. Jean Wayne Gacy was that he liked dressing as a clown. I mean, duh. Yep. Duh. You don't see John Wayne Gacy without seeing, like, that just, ugh. Yeah. No. I don't like clowns. <laughs> Not sorry. So, this started in 1975, apparently, and the reason that basically he beca- became known the killer clown. That is his only real nickname, I think. Yeah, I, I thought the same thing. Yeah, it's not like the other ones where it's like, oh, the veil intruder, the the window knocker. Like, I know. It's nothing like that. You know, he doesn't have like 16 of them. He's just, he's the killer clown. Apparently, he would perform in hospitals, at local children's parties, and even political events. So, Sounds about right. Don't fucking bring this clown around my kid. Imagine. Imagine. You're reading the newspaper, and you see this big clown, and they're like, John Wayne Gacy, boys found, blah, 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 which we'll get into that spoiler alert. (laughs) Um, And then it's like, oh, fuck, dude. He was at my kid's birthday party. Yeah, that's got to be tough. It's got to be a mind warp, dude. It's like, oh. That's awful. No, no, no. No clowns are coming to my kid's birthday party. Even if you're like, I'll pay for it. No. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. No. Okay. So he also had two different clown characters, which he created. Most don't know about the other one as much, but he had Patches and Pogo the clown. Patches is the more known one, but, mm-hmm. or Pogo, yeah, I don't know if I said that right. Anyway, <laughs> it's a long episode. I'm not here for it. So Patches is said to be the more serious clown out of his two personas. And then Pogo is the happy clown. Okay. I'm Pogo. Yeah. So that's scary that he's got a serious persona for being a clown anyway. And because, we'll get like, into Gacy and personas because that will come back into play. Now, yeah, anyway. Oh, yeah, so this clown persona actually comes into play throughout Gacy's crime spree. That's why it is so tied with it. He often used what he called, quote, tricks to lure his victims, which he stated came from his act. So he's like telling these boys like, oh yeah, you know, I'm a clown, blah, 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 come back, see this trick. Yep. So yeah, Uh, we're going to get into the nitty gritty. 
and the murders of John Wayne Gacy. So his first murder actually took place in 1972. Okay. So his wife divorced him in 76. Wow. Yeah. Have no idea. Yeah. This is happening. So he's like freshly married. He's also newly out of prison. The victim was 16-year-old Timothy McCoy, who Gacy came upon at the local Greyhound station. Okay. Apparently, the two drove around basically taking a tour of Chicago before Gacy offered the boy a place to sleep. Now, the kid was supposed to catch a bus the next morning. So Gacy's like, oh, yeah, I'll show you the city. You can sleep on my couch, and then, you know, I'll get you to the bus station early enough. Mm -hmm. So, according to Gacy, the next morning, he was awoken by McCoy standing in his bedroom door with a knife. So he's like, oh, fuck, what's going on? Oh. So he, apparently he thought, I'm in danger, and he lunged at this boy. I'm sorry, but Gacy's a big dude. He's a big dude, and you have, like, a 15, 15-year-old 15 boy, 16-year-old mm -hmm. boy. Come on, seriously? Anyway, so he lunged at the boy, and apparently in the struggle, like, Gacy was cut on the arm, so he's, like, fighting back harder because he's like, oh, he's trying to kill me. He ended up stabbing McCoy repeatedly which resulted in the boy's death. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. After the murder, as Gacy was cleaning up, I guess he soon realized that McCoy would sim like, had simply cooked him breakfast and was coming to wake him up while holding the knife, like, absentmindedly. That's the story. He's like, yeah, I was cleaning off the blood, and I saw, like, eggs and bacon and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I don't know... We'll never know the, the full story. No. You know, we can't ask McCoy, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Gacy ended up burying the body of McCoy in his crawl space. Under the house crawl space. And he sealed it with concrete. Wow. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. This first murder sparked something deep in Gacy. And apparently in an interview later in life Gacy stated that he when he heard the dying noises coming from the boy like the spluttering and like just the guard the, the terrible noises he orgasmed oh my god so this is definitely sexual for him yeah yeah wow so apparently death you know death is a thrill for him and there's no way he was gonna stop Ew, I can't believe that, dude. That uh -huh. is fucking disgusting. Awful. Fucking gross. It's just gross. It's like, how, how can you hear that and just, ugh. Yeah. No, no. So, at the start, of course, he is a bit disorganized. Like, the first killing, it was like, wasn't planned. It wasn't really anything. Who knows? Maybe he did plan it all along. But maybe his story is about the breakfast and he was holding the knife. And who knows? Maybe it was more of like... The accidental killing was something that he was like, oh, shit, I liked that. And then it kind of spurred. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll never know. There's no way to know. And, yeah. He's very disorganized. So his second murder takes place in 1974. And this victim still remains unidentified. Okay. Unfortunately, we will get, yeah, yeah, so, mm -hmm. yeah. And, sorry, guys, about names. I'm going to do my best with names I'm going to try. So the next, the next, the next after his second uh, was the murder of 18-year-old John Bukovich in 1975. And this is when Gacy seems to really find his killing style and, or like his modus operandi, which he will use continuously. Mm -hmm. We're going to get into the modus operandi. Okay, guys, this part sucks. According to Wikipedia, his modus operandi was as followed. He would, of course, bring the young males to his home, where he would supply copious amounts of alcohol and drugs. And basically, for him, this was a way of, like, building trust with them. You can't just bring them in the house and do what you gotta do, you know? Next, he would take out handcuffs, stating he was going to show them a magic trick. Gacy would put the handcuffs on himself and then magically get out of them. He's got the, the fucking key in between his fingers. Yeah. Duh. Yeah. He's fucking, yeah. Like, really? So, Come on, But, of man. course, the boys did not know this. Yeah. So, apparently, after he did this trick, he would offer to teach the young males exactly how he did it. So, he's like, yeah, you want to learn how to do that? Dude, if I see a magician, I want to learn how they do that. You know what I mean? I'm that type of person that I'm like, 
I love watching magicians. And I'm oh like, yeah, I'm like, curious. I'm like, well, how, how the, the fuck do you yeah. do that? So it's it's unfortunately smart that Gacy did that method, because we're gonna get into it. It worked. So he would offer to teach the young males how to do it. Once the handcuffs were placed on the victim and they were locked in place, Gacy would apparently make the statement, "Quote: The trick is you have to have the key." End quote. Mm. So there they are, bound. You're not getting out. And he's just basically toying with the males at this point, just being like, mm, I got you, you're not getting out, which just mentally is awful. Once he had them restrained, he would sexually assault and torture them. He would begin by sitting on their chests and then forcibly making them perform fellatio on him. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Dude, Gacy's bad. I knew about Gacy, but I, did, I guess I didn't know how deep the torture portion was. Yeah. And yeah, we're gonna get Same, into it because like I've li- I've listened to every episode about him, but it's like it's bad. Yeah. So after this, he would torture his victims further, often burning them with cigars. He would also make them get on all fours, where he would ride them like a horse, using makeshift reins which he placed around their necks. Oh boy! So he's pulling on, he's doing choking pony them. Play and, and, yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's all sexual. It all comes down to the sexual sadism fucking shit. So after that, victims would also be sodomized by Gacy and then have foreign objects inserted in the back. Yeah. I don't that, that is what sodomy is, I believe. It, so, yes, it is. Yes. But I think he would sodomize them himself and then he would use objects. And I guess some victims were found with the objects still in. Oh, my good yeah, God. It's, oh yeah, God. it's not good, man. It's no, not fucking good. No, he just leave them like that. It's just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, the, yeah. the mental depravity of some people is just. Uh-huh, yeah. It is just How can you crazy. think about that shit in your head, man? How can you calculate that in your motherfucking head? Yeah, he's not. He literally, he's so crazy and crazy well, that yeah. he just gets done and then uh-huh. he just stops thinking about it and then he just leaves. Uh-huh. And it's like, wow. It's wow. Just, he yeah. just. Yeah. Has no, no, no feelings. I suppose. Oh God, no. no, no, except for the excitement. Yeah, there's an excitement in there, but it's not like a empathy. You can't think about how other people are feeling. Like it's just, oh God, no. So Gacy was able to accomplish all of this torture and abuse because of a. Uh, uh, he had a way of completely immobilizing his victims. So he, of course, you know, used the handcuffs. But he would also strap their legs to a two by four, which had handcuffs put at either end. I think I knew. So he's this. stretching them. Yeah. 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 And they, they can't move. No. You're, just, you're done for. You cannot move at that point. Uh, yeah. So these these boys, I'm saying boys. Because that's what they were. I mean, there's a few that are like 18, 19, 20. Still, they're you're boys. so young. And you're yeah. boys. They had to be completely scared and helpless. Oh, my God. They had been terrified. And I'm just so sorry that they had to endure this. No one should have to endure this. Gacy would also verbally taunt his victims as he carried out the torturous acts. And Because, like, what he was doing isn't enough already. Yeah. Yeah. Just, oh, God. He's fucking bad. He's awful. And apparently to continue the torture, Gacy would bring victims into the bathroom where he would partially drown them before reviving them just to continue the horror and prolong the entire ordeal. He just, he was playing with them, wow, basically. Oh, man. Yeah, and just, you're, you're to a point where you're like, I want to die. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? No, like, absolutely. I hope that everyone can get out of that situation, does have the brain power, but a lot of people, man, you're putting up with that, and he's just taunting you, and he's just holding your head down, and you don't know when it's going to happen, but you know it's going to happen. It's fucking mental, dude. Uh, finally, he would place a rope tourniquet around the victim's neck, then slowly tighten the rope with a hammer handle. So he's not just taking it and twisting it. He's putting it around a handle and then turning that handle so that it slowly it gets tightens. extremely tight that way, uh-huh. too. I mean, that's uh-huh. not just a hand. It's a tool uh-huh. doing it. Like, and I think... Wow, yeah, man. Yeah, it's not cool. This he referred to as his, quote, rope trick, and he would openly tell victims that this was the last trick, hinting at their death. It's like a carnival sideshow for him. He's icky. That's 
so... He's icky. That's so disturbing. Yeah. I mean, that's so disturbing. Apparently, once the victim was deceased, he would place the body under his bed before burying them in a crawl space under his home. Ew. Yeah, I don't know what that was about. Maybe he wanted after death some things probably i think that is what it's what they said i mean he did stuff to that funeral to the um, bodies in the funeral home a necrophilia yeah so he's probably doing that every night thing. until he buried him yeah and then gets another one <laughs> fucking awful he also often used quicklime which is said to speed mm. up the decomp so he would bear he would put that over the graves and then you know yeah fucking awful. i don't like that most of his murders were committed between 1976 and 1978. So it's not too big of a span, but he was doing something. He was sexually abusing boys, and I think the, I think it is bigger than that, but I think what's reported and known is 76 to 78, where, like, it was, it was the big guys. And... <laughs> I'll put this in there. Just wait. Just wait. He's going to escalate. Oh, boy. Here it comes. Yes. Here it comes. So this was the period that he called his, quote, cruising period. Yeah. I don't. He would just cruise around in Greyhound buses, bars, wherever. Ugh, yeah. They all do that. They all fucking do that. They're just driving around. Looking Stay for home. victims. That's, that's. Yep. That's literally it. Of course, for the sake of the timeline, his divorce was finalized in 1976. Okay? So just remember that. Mm Mm-hmm. This, of course, was what he needed. It offered him freedom to commit more murders. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to break down the murders by year. So we're going to start in 1976. This is heavy, guys, okay? We got names coming at you. Remember, I already told you the modus operandi, so he's doing all that to these poor boys. And we're just, we're going to get through it. And all of the pictures will be on the blog. If we can get it. Because it's being a pain in the neck. Okay? There's a lot here. We're working on it. Yes. (laughs) So, mm, somber. April of that year, Gacy abducted and murdered 18-year-old Daryl Sampson. Five weeks later in May, Gacy murdered 15-year-old Randall Raffitt. The same night as the murder of Raffitt, Gacy also abducted and murdered 14-year-old Samuel Stapleton. Wow. He was on just a rampage. On June 3rd, Gacy murdered 17-year-old Michael Bonin. I'm going to say Bonin. Only 10 days later, Gacy was back at it and murdered 16-year-old William Carroll. Wow. He's, he's, yeah. He's just on a rampage. Yeah. And there are a few times where, like, there are little gaps in things, but, yeah, he, yeah, it's bad. So, now sometime between June 13th and August 6th, Gacy murdered three more people, but the victims are unidentified. Yeah. And remember, they're all going in the crawl space. Oh, my God. Remember that. God, his house must fucking stink. Oh, he's got a quick climb. But, yeah, yes, but still, under I, his house they are being buried. And it I has mean, to stink. It just has to still. Well, the thing is, and I didn't put this, like, guys, go to the Wikipedia page. Because the Wikipedia page will keep you literally entertained for a day. A day and a half. Because there's so much. Like, they have literally where every body was buried. And every, like, little thing. And, and this victim was buried on top of this victim. And it was underneath his bedroom and underneath the kitchen and underneath the bed. <sighs> like, it goes into it, guys. I do not want a four-hour episode. I do not want this to be a two-hour episode. Yeah. So I really condensed to fit everything in. But go to that Wikipedia page because it's fucking crazy. Anyway, the spree continues in August when Gacy murders 16-year-old James Hackinson and 17-year-old Rick Johnston. (sighs) Yeah. In October of 1976, Gacy abducted and murdered friends Kenneth Parker and Michael Marino, aged 16 and 14. Just two days later, Gacy murders an employee of his, 19-year-old William Bundy. Now, real quick, I do want to say... He used his construction company for, to his advantage. 
he was hiring young males. He even, like, would lure young males with, oh, do you want a job? I can pay you better than this job. Come here and talk with me in my car. He used this job to his advantage. Of course he did. So if I say it's his employee, it's of the PDM contractors, and he does this a lot. Okay? Now, once again, crawl space, all under the crawl space. Gacy's last victim of 1976 was another employee of his, 17-year-old Gregory Godzik. Now we're in 1977. Gacy's first victim of 1977 was in January, and it was 19-year-old John Zick. Sorry to say that wrong. Early in 1977, Gacy also murdered another unidentified victim. By March, March 15th to be exact, Gacy murdered 20-year-old John Prestige, and he also may have worked with Gacy. Wow. Uh Uh-huh. Just employee after employee. Like, ugh, fuck you, dude. It was either his, his construction business or Greyhound stations. That was, like, the biggest place that he could find. Again, in early summer 1977, Gacy claimed another unidentified victim. July 5th, his next victim was 19-year-old Matthew Bowman. After a little bit of a break, Robert Gilroy goes missing in September after meeting Gacy. He was 18 years old and the son of a police sergeant. Wow. Mm-hmm. He's pretty like, ballsy. Pretty motherfucking ballsy. Yep. And that was in 77. We still have 78 to go. So apparently that police sergeant was... Yeesh. Yeah. Ten days later, Gacy murders 19-year-old John Mowry. And this is, like, the worst part. I'm really sorry, listeners, but we just, we got to get through it. On October 17th, Gacy claims another victim, 21-year-old Russell Nelson. Less than four weeks later, Gacy murdered 16-year-old Robert Winch. November 18th, Gacy's chosen victim was 20-year-old Tommy Bowling. Gacy's next victim was 19-year-old David Talzma. The murder occurred in early December, so he just ramps. He ramps the fuck up. Good Lord. And then the last victim of 1977 uh, actually had Gacy changing things up a little bit. On December 30th, he he abducted 19-year-old Robert Donnelly. And like the others, he had taken him back to his home. He was sexually assaulted and tortured, then repeatedly had his head dunked and held underwater for hours. But for some reason, Gacy let Donnelly go afterwards. Hmm. I can't find what was different about Donnelly or what happened, but he let him go and just said, like, threatened him, like, don't go to the police. I'll know if you go to the police, that kind of thing. But yeah, he just he let him go. Do we have a picture of Donnelly? No, I didn't. I just got the victim, victims. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. could probably find it somewhere. But yeah, there's a wow, there's a few people got, who are. Wow, well, he got let go. Living. We'll get into it. That's yep. crazy. I did not know that. Uh huh. Yep, yep, yep. But of course, Donnelly Donnelly didn't listen to what Gacy said and went to the police. Which good on you. Most like you should. I mean, you, I know it's scary. But you gotta. You have to. You, you gotta. Got, you can't man. let this happen to somebody else. Exactly. More. Exactly. So, Gacy was questioned, but police. Um, or, sorry, I don't know where the fuck. Lost I am her right place. Now. So it happens all the time. <laughs> all the time. And sometimes I'm not reading my notes as is. Sometimes my brain just changes it. Yeah, and you just talk about it as look, a conversation. Exactly. And, and then I look back and I'm like, wait, what, huh? What? Yeah. Is this something? So, yeah, no. So, Gacy was questioned about this, but he explained it all away by stating it was consensual. And he told officers that Donnelly was just angry that he didn't get the money promised. So you got to be kidding me. So he told the police, he's like, no, you know, when he came over, I told him, you know, blah, 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 you know, we can, blah, 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 sex work type stuff. And then, yeah, yeah. Yep. Police believe this story and no charges are filed against Gacy. That's our police suck minute. Mm -hmm. Back in the day. I don't know. I don't want to get into that. In February, Gacy murdered 19-year-old William Kindred. So we're in 1978 now. And he was the last of Gacy's victims to be buried in the crawl space under the home. Oh, wow. There was no more room. No. We will get to that. (laughs) So, the next victim of Gacy is 26-year-old Jeffrey Rignall. 
On March 21st, he lured Rignall into his car. Immediately, Gacy used chloroform, rendering Rignall un unconscious. Now, there's not a picture of Rignall either, and we'll get into that. Mm -hmm. He obviously drove the man to his home. It's where he goes first and foremost. And this is where he continually tortured him with lit candles and whips while he was bound. Gacy also kept using the chloroform. So Rignall's like con like in and out and in and out and in and out of consciousness, which is just, that doesn't feel great. No. That's not cool at all. Apparently once Gacy, once Gacy felt satisfied, he drove an unconscious Rignall to Chicago's Lincoln Park and left him there. Unconscious, but alive. <sighs> Yep. Rignall went immediately to police once he awoke. And he was still very groggy on the details. He didn't know exactly, like, what was happening. Sure. I mean, he's in and out of it. He's yeah. probably just getting snippets. But he was able to identify Gacy's car and some of the streets that, like, led to Gacy's home. Okay. Yep, yep. Police obtained a warrant, and he was arrested July 15th on battery charges. Now... Probably thinking, like, she said this was long. Story's over. No, no we're not get done. Let out. Anyway, we're not going to let it done. So, while awaiting trial, they don't just stay in jail. Especially, like, it's a battery charge. Yeah. So, that's not like he murdered seven people. Like, you're going to stay in jail after that. But with this, you're going to get let out on bail and then you're going to have to just come to court. Mm -hmm. And then, once you're sentenced, that's when you go to jail. So while he's awaiting trial, Gacy, of course, was out and about, continuing his cruising period. Now, if you remember, I stated that William Kindred was the last of the victims who were buried in the crawl space. Well, it was at capacity. He had no room. Gacy needed a plan B. He decided to start disposing of his victims, and I hate writing that. Every time I write, like, disposing victims, or, like, I don't know how to say it in a kinder way. Because there's no way. Like, how, I, I just don't like it. So, he started disposing of his victims by throwing them off the I-55 bridge into the Des Plaines River. Jesus Christ. Yeah. 20-year-old Timothy O'Rourke was the first victim in which Gacy used this new disposal method. Later, while talking with investigators, Gacy told them he had thrown five bodies into the river, but only four were ever recovered. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One of the recovered was victim Frank Landingen. Landingen? Someone Sounds say right it? To me, yeah. And he was age 19. He was murdered by Gacy on November 4th, and his naked remains were found in the river on November 12th. Mm -hmm. Gacy's last two kills occurred late in 1978. November 24th, Gacy murdered 20 year old James Mazzara. He was also found in the Des Plaines River. Now we're going to get into the last murder that occurs on December 11th, 1978. This is the string that really starts to unravel for Gacy and things are just, he going to get caught guys. He going to fucking get caught. Ready? So Gacy went into a pharmacy where 15 year old Robert Peist, Peist was working. Sorry. He had apparently offered the boy a job. So when Robert's mom came to the pharmacy at nine to pick him up, he was like, hey, I'm going to go talk to this guy about a job. Wait right here. I will be right back. Okay? Mom is told I'm going to return shortly. Gacy, however, did not know that and did not plan to offer the boy a job. Instead, he drove him to the Somerdale Avenue home and he murdered Robert. Immediately once Robert had not returned, his mother grew very concerned and the family filed a missing persons report. Police questioned the boy's boss at the pharmacy who named John Wayne Gacy as the man who was speaking with Robert. Probably a small-ass fucking town, and apparently he's like Mr. Neighborhood, so everybody knows you. You're the fucking clown for the, every kid's birthday party. Mm -hmm. Are you dumb? Be a little more discreet. Well, quite honestly, so, yeah, back up. I think he was probably feeling like, oh, I'm probably going to go to jail, you know, after the Rignall mm -hmm. thing and the battery charge. So he's probably like... He's amping up because he's like, shit, I'm not going to be able to do this anymore. That's true. He I got to fucking blah, 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 blah. So he started getting sloppy. He didn't care. He already knew nope. he was going to go to jail. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Okay. I had to put that together as I was talking about it. So 
Uh, after the police hear the name John Wayne Gacy, they decided to investigate him further. They first conduct a background check, and this pulled up his past prison stint for sodomy, and also the new outstanding charge for battery in the case of Jeffrey Rignall. Gacy's sordid history often, like, or sorry, often, that's not even in there. Gacy's sordid history starts raising red flags for police, so they go straight to his home and question him, because it's like, shit's, shit's tying together here. Finally. Yeah, yeah, we're making... Right time. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, he obviously denies everything, but investigators just, they're not convinced. On December 13th, officers obtained a search warrant. The immediate fear was that Robert was actually being held against his will inside of Gacy's home. So, they're like, we got to get in here. Yeah. That was the first boy that they thought was, and they didn't know, you know, they didn't know that he had fucking murdered a bunch of motherfucking people mm-hmm. they just knew that this boy went missing so they're like oh he's in their hostage situation type mm-hmm. of shit so they're like we gotta get in there it's time sensitive though the search did not produce robert peist peist i don't know tons of evidence was collected the findings were several police badges a pistol syringe and hypodermic needles handcuffs a two by four with holes drilled on either end bottles of Valium and other prescription drugs, several driver's licenses, underwear, which was way too small to fit Gacy, and a 1975 class ring with the initials J-A-S. Now, these, this police badge, like, was it a real one? Did he steal it from somewhere? No, I don't. Well, it's several police it badges, so I think they were just, like, counterfeit Costume? type, yeah, type of thing. And I do think he used them with some of the boys exhibiting yeah, power and things like that. It would, yeah. would be none the wiser, really. Yeah, yeah, like if his tricks weren't working, like, yeah. oh, you want to see the handcuff trick? He's probably like, well, I'm a police officer. That's why I have handcuffs or something yeah. like that. Why you do know? you have handcuffs? Well, because I'm a police officer. Yeah, 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 if they weren't believing the clown shit or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the 1975 class ring, we're going to find out that belongs to John Zick. Okay. Okay? And, of course, they also found a nylon rope, which is the, the, the yeah. Eh. Of course, all of this was not enough to immediately arrest Gacy. So, what do you mean? You, it could all be—you have to find certain things to make it not circumstantial. You know what I mean? And they have to tie it back to Robert specifically. So it's like, yeah, yeah, because they don't know the full extent yet. They don't know it yet. Okay. But of course, while the investigation went on, Gacy was kept on constant surveillance. He had two police officers on him at all I hope times. So. Gacy's Oldsmobile, Oldsmobile, and the PDM work vehicles were confiscated, and they found some shit in there too. Inside the trunk of the Oldsmobile, multiple fibers were found, which were thought to be human hair. Search dogs who had the scent of Robert Peist also hinted at a death scent inside of the car. They can smell, yeah. Yeah, I know, yeah. just the, the, the way it's said. And they were just... like, they well, they didn't say it that way. I kind of made it different. I made it my way. Um, it's like a death reaction is what they call it. It's like the way that they like sit and stuff, but they're getting it from the smell. So they're, it was like the passenger seat of the car too, where like the, yeah. So not great. Gacy, who was growing frustrated at the constant surveillance, actually decided to file a motherfucking civil suit against the police department. Wow. Mm-hmm. But evidence kept coming. It kept coming back, Gacy. So on December 20th, Gacy, visibly disheveled, drove for a meeting at his lawyer's office where he immediately asked for a drink. Once the drinks start flowing, so did the confession. He told Duh. him he's fucking stupid. Well, he at this point he's under constant surveillance. He cannot kill. He cannot do anything. He knows they're zeroing in on him. Mm-hmm. He's disheveled. He's not sleeping. He's not, you know, he's just he's going insane. He's slowly going crazy. So if he, he wasn't already. Oh no, he's fucking yeah, yeah. Oh, he's dead. We can say that. He's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so he went and he told them that Robert was dead and that he was in the river. He spent the rest of the night giving a rambling confession including the crawl space. So he's giving it all up. Wow. All up. Okay. Apparently he, like, passed out drunk midway through the confession, but, like, they already had enough to get this guy anyway, so it's like, whatever. Yeah, he's just, mm, passed out fucking drunk. Ugh, 
He's just a disgusting, yeah. disgusting, vile man. Oh, yeah, we'll get into that, too. I mean, he's just, he's just, yeah, no, no. He's just a big dude who's just gross. So when he awoke, his lawyers told him he had confessed everything, and they're like, you know, you should probably stay here. They're not police. They don't have to keep, they can't keep him in custody, but apparently he was having, like, a meeting with them that day, and they're like, no, you know, you should just stay. We'll have our meeting, you know, go over what, and he's like, no, I gotta go. I have to go now. So he decided this is my last day of freedom. I'm going to go, you know, tie up loose ends, do things, enjoy my last day or whatever. Mm -hmm. He described his last day as hazy and he, he just knew his arrest was on the horizon. Hazy? I wonder why. Just probably. I get it. It's like a blur type of thing. You know, you don't remember every little thing you do. You have police still following you. You just, you just gave a confession. Imagine the anxiety that came with that. Like, ah, fuck. I can't hide this shit now. (sighs) And, you know, he had some things to do. So while he was out and tying up loose ends, police obtained a second search warrant, this time for the infamous crawl space. Gacy saw this coming and attempted to destroy the evidence. Apparently, he unplugged his sump pump, flooding the area. Uh Uh-huh. So that, if you don't have a basement, listeners, that's basically, like, if you live in an area with, like, flooding basements flood a lot it's the lowest thing they flood a lot so you get this little pump that you can turn on and it'll basically take the water out of your basement Mm -hmm. so that's what it is and he's like i'm fucking turning this shit on or turn it off i'm flooding the bitch so good for police they were able to quickly plug it up and they started digging immediately they uncover putrefied human flesh and an arm bone right away (sighs) And armed with this evidence, they were finally able to arrest Gacy for murder. On December 22nd, Gacy gave a formal statement confessing to the murder of approximately 30 young males. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Gacy also claimed that he only dug five of the graves in the crawl space and had, like, his PDM employees digging the others. Wow. I don't know... I, yeah, I don't know how that worked out or, like, the truth behind that, but, uh, yeah, 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 maybe accomplices, maybe, uh, not getting mm-hmm. into it, though. Anyway, so, they also said that, like, apparently, towards the end, when the crawl space was getting full, he planned to cover the entire thing with concrete. He was just going to make a concrete floor under his house and just cover it. So, I don't know. Good thing he didn't get that far. Because he would have known, you know. Like, Never would have found it. Exactly. I mean, they'd have to drill. Well, if he confessed, then they would have been like, all right, let's drill. But if he, if that was like that, I don't think he would have confessed. Mm-mm. You know, he knew. He knew they were coming for him. So he led police to where exactly he had dumped the bodies in the river. Once the full search of the crawl space was over, they had produced the remains of 26 bodies. And those 26 are the ones that we will have pictures of on the blog and basically who they were okay Mm -hmm. so if you're hearing names and you're like well there's no picture these are the ones that that were found in the crawl space identified okay they use medical and dental records for identification due to the advanced advanced stages of decomposition they've been there a long time after a full investigation in february of 1980 gacy was brought to trial and charged with 33 murders Once again, he was evaluated to see if he was competent to stand trial. The defense wanted him to plead not guilty by reasons of insanity. And he always, he started talking very early on about how he had multiple personalities. Three doctors corroborated this and testified that they did find him to be a paranoid schizophrenic. And he basically, that's what he sees, has his cop persona, he has his Gacy persona, he has his clown persona, and he has all of these different personalities. That is what he was claiming, okay? I hate it. Yeah, I agree. So the prosecution was not believing this. They presented the case that Gacy was sane and even premeditated his crimes. Jeffrey Rignall, Donald Voorhees, and Robert Donnelly all testified against Gacy at trial. Some damning evidence right there, man. Mm-hmm. You got, yeah, you got living victims. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, bitch. Testimony also showed that 13 victims died of asphyxiation, six of ligature strangulation, and one of multiple stab wounds. Wow. 
And this basically showed in court that, because Gacy was trying to say, uh, well, Gacy was trying to say, like, oh, it was autoerotic asphyxiation that went bad. We were doing it during a sex act, and it went horribly wrong. But this evidence shows... That's not all true. That's not true. Because a lot of times they had have stuff, like, stuffed in their mouth and things like that that they mm-hmm. would choke on. And, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Ha ha. Bitch. Science. So, in March of 1980, the jury deliberated only a few hours before returning the verdict. He was found guilty of 33 murders and also found guilty of sexual assault and taking indecent liberties with a child. He was sentenced to death for each murder he committed. Mm-hmm. So that's like 33 death sentences. Mm-hmm. His execution date was set for June 2nd, 1980. <laughs> was. We'll get there. Of course, once incarcerated, Gacy filed multiple appeals, which moved his execution date out further and further. Of course. As usual. Uh-huh. He was on death row for a total of 14 years. During this time. Oh, my God, dude. 14, yeah, it's only ridiculous. 14 years. Isn't that nuts? Fucking stupid. During this time, Gacy started to use his isolation to begin painting. He would paint birds, skulls, Disney scenes, but his most notable are paintings that he did of his own clown personas. Mm-hmm. And I do have one on the blog. It's getting added right uh, as we speak, <laughs> Yeah, there we go. There we go. And this was before the whole law where it's like inmates can't make money off things. So he was, like, selling his paintings. He was allowed to do that kind of shit. That's not allowed anymore. Thank God. Thank God. Even though I'm that person who would want to collect that shit. But, like, make it, you just can't make money off of it. That's what they're doing. They're making it, but you just can't make money off of it. Now, these paintings of his have either either been sold off or burned. And some are even on display at various exhibitions. Sold off or burned? So, yeah, there was a snippet that said that a lot of the family of the victims would buy these paintings and then burn them. Cool. Yep. 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 I can't blame them for that. Fuck no. That's a good idea. Fuck no. John Wayne Gacy was set to be executed finally in May of 1994. The last meal he requested of, I was like, you know what? I'm going to include his last meal. A bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. A dozen fried shrimp. French fries, strawberries, and a Diet Coke. <laughs> yep. Okay. All the fried food, baby. Uh, which, what What would your last meal be? I was just going to ask you that. I don't yeah, think I like, can, I, I don't, think I, can answer I don't that. think I can answer that either. I'm like thinking and thinking, and I'm like, I love everything. Like, I love food a lot to where it would be like, I don't know what I would like. I don't think I love anything enough to be like, well, that's my, my last meal. You know, like see, I, I think know. I'm more of like I like everything. I would have to have like a huge buffet style. Yeah, well, you can like get like he got a lot of stuff. Yeah, he did. He did get a lot of stuff, so you can like get. Whatever you can get you a want. lot of stuff, but yeah, no, I don't even. I don't even know what I would get, and it would have to be stuff that you can't get on commissary. Yeah. So I feel like it would be something like I'd probably be the dumb person who's like. I want an Egg McMuffin with a hash brown and a milk. <laughs> and milk. <laughs> and a milk, baby. Make it just chocolate, like, please. That's just... No, I love the white milk at McDonald's. <laughs> I drink that shit. It's so cold and so good. That would probably be it. But I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully I don't ever have to, like... Figure that out? Figure that yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't want to. No. Uh, that's not yeah, good. It's yeah. It's no bueno at yeah. all. So that was his last meal. He was executed by lethal injection on May 10th, 1994. He was two years old. Mm -hmm. I was actually literally just about two years old. I wasn't even two years years old yet. I had 19 days. (laughs) (laughs) It's quick math because it's May. So apparently, though, this did not go as planned. Okay? The drugs which are administered via tube got, like, coagulated inside of the tube and just, like, stopped. So he wasn't getting the drugs into his veins. They had to clear out the tubes, replace the tubes, and try it all again. Wow. And, yeah, apparently it was, like, 18 minutes long. Which I'm like, you deserve that mental abuse. You Uh fucking deserve that. Yeah. Play around with him a little bit. Like, Like, holy shit, could you imagine? Like, just waiting for a piercing is bad enough. Uh Uh-huh, yeah, he's just waiting for the death drugs to make it into his body, like, to kill him. And they're like, it's not working, doctor. 
it's not working. I don't know if a doctor. I, I'd assume a doctor. Like, it's not working. It's not working. And then they have to literally take him, take all the tubes out. And he's just sitting there. He's just waiting, dude. He's just fucking waiting. Yep. Yep. So after 18 minutes, Gacy was pronounced dead. According to Wikipedia, his last words spoken, well, reportedly spoken. So I don't know if these were his last words as last words or if these were just the last words that had come out of his mouth. Yeah. Sometime before the injection. They were apparently, <laughs> quote, kiss my ass, end quote. Wow. Not rehabilitated at no, fucking that's... all. Yeah. Yeah. I do got a fun little tidbit here. Ready? Ready? Yes. His body was cremated. But apparently his brain was removed, and it is in the possession of Helen Morrison. She apparently was, back in the day, like, interviewing many violent offenders around that time. So she was kind of figuring out, like, the psychology behind, like, why they do what they do. And I guess Gacy was one of them, so she was awarded his brain for study. Wow. Uh Uh-huh. I didn't go into that. I'm not That's sure if there even is anything. I want to know what she found. Because, like, yeah. I went to her, like, side just to kind of, like, you know, get a quick little, what is she? Yeah. You know? But, yeah, yeah, she's got his brain. I really wonder what she found if she found anything. I know. We'll have to side goo, but I don't yeah. know if there is even any findings. Who knows? I know. Yeah. yeah. So, Sweet. yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah, so before we end the episode, I know everyone will be wondering... The House of Horrors, where Gacy committed and hid his horrendous crimes. Yeah, did they take it down, or can you... Demolished. Yeah. Nope, they... The the way that... And they literally... There's pictures. You can see them, like, digging through, like, the floors and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, they're taking this house kind of apart. And then it became just, like, there's so much death and tragedy that happened here. Like, we got to get rid of this house. Yeah, no. Nobody's going to buy it. It would would become a museum, obviously, if anything. Yeah, yeah. But still, no. It had to, you know, like, it was right after the investigation was done and they knew they didn't need anything else out of it. Mm -hmm. Done. Done. Yeah, good. They take that stuff down a lot. Yeah, I think... I think that the land was bought and people, like, built a house on it. Yeah. But, like, I'm curious if just the land itself is, like, it's got to be. It's got to be. Well, I mean, when you're buried into a basement that's burying the into paranormal. the ground down there. Yeah. So, yeah. It's the like land. It's, yeah. it's not even just the house. No, there was awful shit that happened right there in that uh-huh. plot, and I would never buy it. I, if, I di- if I bought it, I'd plant trees, and I would never, I'd yeah, never no, build anything there. No, it would not there. be anything. No. It'd be somewhere you walk by. I'd do a garden. I'd do a lovely mm-hmm. memorial garden yeah. slash... Which, and Whatever. I was thinking about it, I'm going to do a side goog on the history of that land and see if maybe I can get an episode out of that, because that'd be a cool haunted episode. It'd be like, yeah. hey, we got Gacy again. Yeah. This time it's haunted. And this time so. it's his voice. But on. only if I can get some good... Yeah. I mean, like, if it's not... No. If it's just like, oh, some people think that there's talking coming from there and that's all you see. Then. Or it's just like, the owners report nothing. Leave us alone. You yeah. know, like something like that. Yeah. So... Anyway, yeah, so that is John Wayne Gacy, the clown of fucking nightmares. There he is. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, that was awful, and I'm glad that we're done with it. I'm glad that you guys should be proud of us. We did not I handle I said no word. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's like, yeah, we there knew. no set tangent. Oh, we my God. It I probably took it from being what could have been an hour and a half to an hour and 15 minutes. So only an hour? Yes. Yeah. All right, yes. Yeah. Because I'm writing this, and I'm like, holy fuck. We've dude. literally had holy shorter... Fuck in length episodes that like writing episodes that come out longer than this one has been yeah yeah, because we just talk yeah let's not say goodbye forever either so no we'll get in there we'll get in there so yeah uh look up the wikipedia page if you want to take like the full deep 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 dive because there is a lot there also make sure to check out the plethora of pictures on the blog plus resources and a bunch of other great stuff. They are set up very nicely. It took me pretty much the whole time we've been here today to do it. So yeah, please yeah, yeah. look at it and share it, please. Oh, please. And, please. You know, we've 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 put all the victims that we know of that they have pictures up there so you can yeah. pay them your respects and, and things like that. And those are the twenty six that came from the identify that came from the house too. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Although, no, some of them are the bar- or the river. Yeah, yeah the last river. few. Yeah. So, yes, uh, you can find that at www.morethanmurderpod.com. Uh, if you are missing your girls in between episodes, make sure to follow us on all the socials. You can find us on Facebook at... More Than Murder Pod. 
No. Oh, sorry. This is Facebook. More than murder. Yep. <laughs> Twitter at. More than underscore murder. Yep, yep. And Insta at. Finally, more than murder pod. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> you heard it. You heard it. For more content from us, you can go subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just search more than murder and hit the bell. Hit that bell. Hit it. We would also love if you could leave us reviews, especially our Apple listeners. We see you. We see you. Please do. Oh, and I was listening to podcasts on my Google Podcasts the other day, and I don't know what it does, if it does anything. I didn't get anything. I haven't gotten anything. No, it's not like, it's not like getting any, no, 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 it's nothing like that. But I don't know what this heart does, if it's just for like, if that sends it to, you can heart things. What does it say? It says... I think it just saves it as, like, your favorite episode. You'll see episode. more episodes like this in your recommendations. God darn it. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's just like, I was like, maybe that is It's something. like on Spotify. I can love music, too, yeah. and stuff like that. So, yeah, probably Like Pandora, too. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. yes, leave us a review. Let us know what you think. We are offering some free goodies for all that do. So, leave us a review and email us to... Uh, yeah, we'll get that to you, or whatever. To the yeah. Gmail. Yep, you've heard it every single episode, so. Yep, so if you'd like to reach out to us either for free goodies or to say hi, you can email us at the Gmail, morethemurderpod at gmail.com. Uh, yep, that is about it. We'll get back at you next week. Yep, sounds Thanks. good to me. Yeah. Thanks for listening. We Thanks love you. Thanks for listening. Love you, love you. Long time. Ta-ta. Bye. Bye.